Okay, all right. So uh, let's talk about some past paper questions from this chapter, coordinate geometry. Okay, let's see. The first question is, the coordinates of two points A and B are minus 7, 3 and 5, 11 respectively. Show that the equation of the perpendicular bisector of AB is 3x plus 2y equals 11. Now you guys can see the question that we just did was of similar type, okay? So please think about past paper questions as you know questions that you already know. Don't think about it this way that past paper questions are more difficult and the book examples are less difficult. I'm not talking about any one student. This is how every student is. This is how you and I, I used to think uh, about it just like this, okay? All right, so anyways, let's try doing it. And I'm pretty sure all of you would be able to do it because we have just done a question of similar type. Okay, all right. So the line segment is AB. The coordinates of A are these. And we need to find out the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Okay, all right. Now, again, the idea behind the perpendicular bisector is that it is a line that would be bisecting the line segment AB perpendicularly, okay? So first of all, let's just find out the midpoint of AB just so I have a point on the perpendicular bisector. For the midpoint, it's X1 plus X2. So minus seven plus five divided by two. And it's Y1 plus Y2. So it's three plus 11 divided by two. And this is going to give me minus 2 by 2 and 14 by 2. And finally, the midpoint of AB is going to be minus 1 and 7. Okay. This is going to be the midpoint of AB. All right. The next thing that is important for finding out the equation of any line is its gradient. Okay. So for finding out the gradient of the perpendicular bisector, first of all, I need to find out the gradient of AB. Now for the gradient of AB, it's Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. And this is X1, this is Y1, then this is X2 and this is Y2. So it would be 11 minus 3 divided by 5 minus and then minus 7. And this would give me 8 divided by 12. And that is going to be, you can simplify that or you can, let's simplify it. So it's going to be 2 by 3, okay? This is the gradient of AB. I am not interested in AB. I am interested in finding out the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So M of or the slope of or the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is going to be the negative reciprocal of this thing. The negative reciprocal of this thing is going to be minus 3 by 2. Negative is here. Reciprocal is just flipping the numerator and denominator. Okay, so I got minus 3 by 2. Now I have everything. I have a point lying on the perpendicular bisector and its gradient. So now I can easily find it out. So it's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 so it would become y minus 7 equals minus 3 by 2 x plus 1 and let's just simplify this so i would get y equals minus 3 by 2 x minus 3 by 2 plus 7 and obviously now I need to simplify this thing because I need to give the final answer in, in the form that the examiner wanted me to give. Here it is, okay? So what I can do is at this point, let's just 
simplify this first y equals minus 3 by 2x and then we have minus 3 by 2 is minus 1.5 plus 7 and that is 11 by 2 so it's plus 11 by 2 and at this point i am going to multiply both sides with 2 just so i can get rid of the twos in uh, denominator and this would give me 2y equals minus 3x plus 11 and I am just supposed to take this minus 3x on the other side so I would get 3x plus 2y equals 11 and this is what I was asked to prove. This is the answer. Okay, now ask me if you have anything because this is the second time we repeated you know a, a question of similar type if you have anything that's coming to your mind please ask me right now any difficulties with this so i have a question about hmm? uh yeah kind of uh, missing the part that you um uh, you switch the denominator with the numerator yes uh, mr when you do this uh, like when do you have to do this uh, this uh, trick i i I'll tell you i'll tell you okay so the idea is that when two lines are parallel Okay, let's talk about this first. When two lines are parallel, their gradients are same. Okay, if I know the gradient of this line, I would say that the gradient of this line is also M1 because the lines are parallel. This is the concept. Okay, and if I have two lines which are perpendicular to each other, in this case, the idea says that if the gradient of this line is M1, the gradient of the other line is going to be the negative reciprocal, okay? So whenever two lines have a 90 degree angle between them, or if it says perpendicular, just know that their gradients are basically going to be the negative reciprocals of each other, okay? For example, let's say I have a scenario where I have two perpendicular lines. For example, let me just talk about it. So let's say the gradient of this line is 1 by 2. Okay, if this is 1 by 2. And if you know that both the lines are perpendicular to each other, the gradient of this line is going to be the negative reciprocal of what we had for this one. Okay, so this is how the idea is. So every time, whenever you have been asked to find the equation of a perpendicular bisector, Perpendicular bisector means that it would be a line that would be bisecting the line segment AB perpendicularly, okay? So then we are just shifting the uh, numerator and denominator. This is what reciprocal is and we're just adding a negative sign, okay? Thank you, miss. Okay, all right, perfect. And please ask me as many questions as you want because this is the time, okay? You can ask me, okay. All right, let's talk about, okay, now this was the A part. The second part was basically related to uh, circles. We'll talk about circles and then we'll do that, okay? Let's talk about another question. We would be able to do the first part only, but let's see. And again, you will see that the first part is just what we did yesterday, okay? Um, like we did a question of this type yesterday where we had to find possible values of a variable and the idea was same. Let's read it first. The point A has coordinates P1 and the point B has coordinates 9, comma 3P plus 1 where P is a constant. For the case where the distance AB is 13 units, find the possible values of P. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the solution for the first part. Talking about the distance AB, that's 13 units. And we already know how to find distance between two points, OK? So this was the very first unit of this chapter where we discussed the formula for distance between two points, and it was AB or the distance between AB or the length of the line segment AB, the wordings could be different, but the idea is same. So it's root x2 minus x1 square 
plus y2 minus y1 square, okay? The, we have been told that the distance AB is 13. This means that this is 13. And now I need to plug in x1, x2, y1, y2 according to the scenario. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. So x2 minus x1 whole squared plus y2 minus y1 whole squared. And this is going to be, let me just simplify this. 9 minus 3 squared plus these two would be cancelled and I would just get 3p squared. Okay. And now I need to simplify this. So for that, I will be squaring both sides. I'll square this side and I will square this side and I would be able to cancel out the square root. 13 square would give you 169. 9 minus p squared would give you 81 minus 2 into 9 into p plus p squared plus this would give you 9p squared. Okay. Yes, please uh, make sure that all these steps are correct and if you find anything wrong just uh, tell me directly because at times you know uh, just things when things go wrong okay anyways um, it's going to be minus 169 plus 81 minus 18p and then plus 10p squared let me just simplify this 10p squared minus 18p and now we have minus 169 plus 81 so this is going to give you minus 88 yes okay and now we can just take something common to make it simple or if you just want to do it directly you can do it directly as well right when i say directly it basically means using um the quadratic formula okay because factorization at times is a bit more complicated thing okay all right we can just take two common for now and this would give you 5p squared minus 9p minus 44 okay and now let's do it by the quadratic formula directly so p is equal to minus b a is the coefficient of p squared that's 5 b is the coefficient of p that's minus 9 and c is minus 44 okay it would be minus b plus minus root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a now you guys can certainly see we are using quadratics here we are certainly using quadratics here and this is how these chapters are. Okay, P is equal to minus 5 plus minus 81 minus 4 into minus 44 plus 5 divided by 2 into 5. Let's just simplify the discriminant first. It would be 81 minus 4 into minus 44 into 5 and this would give me 9 plus minus 31 divided by 10 and finally I would get 9 plus 31 that's 40 divided by 10 and I would get 9 minus 31 and that would be minus 11 by 5. Okay, this is the simplified version. So this would be 4 and this is going to be minus 2.2 and these are going to be the possible values of P. Okay, so again, since in this class, the two questions, the two past paper questions that we have discussed, 
you guys can clearly see that again and again the idea behind the questions is repeated okay perpendicular bisector is very important and then using the distance formula you would have to make a quadratic equation and then simplify that to find possible values of a variable okay so any difficulties with this concept with the second one that we have just discussed no no uh, okay and munja and no, no, no. anything motisam that's coming to your mind please ask me freely okay all right okay perfect so this was the idea behind it let me just stop the recording